Dr. Huda Zagbi is here now, the McCusick Awardee. First of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Deeply honored. So tell me a little bit about your work with Rett Syndrome. My work with Rett Syndrome was inspired by seeing children with Rett Syndrome. I saw girls with that disorder and watching how the disorders, disorder is choreographed over almost five to seven years losing the ability to retain milestones you've learned, losing the use of the hands, and the inability to socially communicate, and language, absence of language, together with motor abnormalities, I felt there has to be a gene that explains this disease. And while the disease is sporadic, one in a family, it is really that consistent clinical picture that convinced me there has to be a gene causing that. And we spent years, because the technology wasn't there, till we found the Rett syndrome gene in 1999. And once we found it, it's called methylcytosine binding protein 2, it, be, it became very clear that it accounts for the vast majority of cases of Rett syndrome. So that's how it all started. Now, the goal of finding the gene was to find something to help the girls. And through that process, as we began to study the mechanism of the disease, create animal models that model the disease, we learned quite a bit. We learned that not only losing the function of the gene can cause threat, but we also doubling it can also cause another neurological disease we refer to today as the MECP2 duplication syndrome. So in the past few years, we've been working on both disorders, trying to find ways to understand what happened when these genes are altered, this gene is altered in either direction, and what can you do about it? In the area of the duplication, we've made nice progress. We're using antisense oligos, small pieces of DNAs that can bind to the RNA. We found a way in animal models to correct the level of the protein again, bring it back to normal. That work is going to lead us, we hope, in the next short term, in the next few years, to therapeutics in that disorder. You talk about seeing the girls, seeing the families who are suffering, watching them decline, and then also working in research. Is that your inspiration? What is it you think that makes and drives a good scientist? For me, the inspiration has been the patients, no doubt. I was a physician. I was trained to be a child neurologist. I had no research experience. It's seeing the patients, I realized as a clinician in 19, 80s, I could offer nothing if I stay as a clinician. So I had to learn research, and I believe in genetics. It's the root of everything. I, I had to. So for me, that was the driver. And what keeps us going every day is the knowledge that no matter how small or big the steps we're having, we're getting closer to an answer. Knowledge is power. And the more we gather knowledge and understanding, the more we have a bigger framework to work within to really help the patients. And I feel like with technology, that knowledge is moving exponentially from what it was perhaps when you began your career. So can you talk about the future? To your point about the knowledge, what took us 16 years to do to find the Rett syndrome gene, you can find in one day today. This is how much the technology has improved. And I think there are many other examples I can give, but I think the Rett syndrome is the best example that you could now load the DNA on a machine and get the sequence within a day or two and have the answers. So think about that. Where we're going from now for the duplication syndrome, we're working towards translating the discoveries in the lab now to therapies for the human uh, individuals after the animal model work. For Rett syndrome, we're continuing to pursue what can we do to make this disease better? And we're taking really three lines of therapy approaches here. One of them is to tackle the protein itself. Can we change its level? Can we boost its levels or activities? We're exploring strategies like that. The other one, it regulates many genes. Some of these genes may be really important for brain function. Is any one or two targets really more important? We're exploring that very deeply because they could boost brain function not to replace the protein, but at least help with a few symptoms. And the third tack is modulate the brain network itself. So you've got a, a child with Rett syndrome, you know certain brain cells, most brain cells are not functioning at full capacity. There is technology, which is called deep brain stimulation, 
which if you stimulate and it's applied in Parkinson disease and other diseases, psychiatric diseases, if you stimulate certain areas of the brain, you can really improve the function of the circuit. In a mouse model of RET, and in collaboration with a colleague, Dr. Tang, we've shown that indeed you can correct a lot of the plasticity deficit and learning deficit. So we're exploring that for additional features of RED. So we're taking a multi-pronged approach. That's where we're going in the future. We hope to bring treatments. Well, very exciting. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your inspiration and congratulations on your award. Thank you so much.